Hello, welcome to part 15 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our 71st question. A patient come to clinic complaining of inflammation and pain. The physician diagnosed the patient as having bruxitis and recommended iodophoresis for treatment. Which of the following is the most frequent location of bursitis? Option A. Subochromial area. Option B. Knee. Option C. Elbow. Option D. Ischial tuberosity. And the answer is... Option A. Subochromian area. Explanation to this question is, the most frequent location in which bursitis is diagnosed is in the subochromian area. Bursitis is an inflammation of bursa, the connective tissue structure surrounding a joint. The goals of treatment of bursitis include pain control and maintenance of the joint motion. Now let's move to our 72nd question. A patient who had a stroke is assessed by physical therapist before starting a course of physical therapy. On assessment, the patient demonstrates contralateral weakness, contralateral sensory loss of toes, foot and leg and inability to make decisions. Urinary incontinence is also noted. The artery that was likely affected is Option A. Internal carotid artery Option B. Vertebral artery Option C. Anterior cerebellar artery Option D. Medial cerebellar artery And the answer is Option C. Anterior cerebellar artery Explanation to this question is The anterior cerebellar artery was most likely affected a stroke in internal carotid artery injury is manifested by aphasia, apraxia, and homonymous hemianopia. A stroke in vertebral artery is characterized by numbness and weakness of face, dysphagia, and facial pain. A stroke in middle cerebral artery is manifested by stupor, dowsiness, and global aphasia. Now move to our 73rd question. During manual muscle testing of hip flexors in the sitting position, a patient exhibit lateral or external rotation with abduction of the thigh as resistance is applied. The physical therapist should suspect the muscle substitution by the Option A. Sartorius Option B. Tensor facial lata Option C. Adductor longus Option D. Semimembranosis And the answer is Option A. Sartorius by Faber's test Explanation to this question is the sartorius flexes laterally or externally rotate and abduct the hip joint. With resisted hip flexion, the sartorius will be recruited to perform all three actions, give the observation substitution pattern. The tensor fascia lata is medial or internal rotator and flexor of the hip. So substitution by it would involve medial or internal rotation and abduction. The adductor longus would adduct the hip. Substitution by semimembranosis would cause hip extension. Now let's move to our 74th question. A physical therapist asks a female patient suspected of S1 neuro root compression to trying walking on her toes. This test aims to check for muscle weakness. Walking on toes aims to test which of the following muscle of the lower extremity. Option A. Flexor digitorum longus Option B. Sartorius Option C. Semimembranosis Option D. Flexor digitorum brevis And the answer is Option A. Flexor digitorum longus Explanation to this question is Walking on toes tests the flexor digitorum longus muscle this muscle also assists in foot inversion. Sartorius flexes laterally rotates and abducts the hip joint. Semimembranosis flexes and medially rotates the knee joint. Flexor digitorum brevis flexes the proximal interphalangeal joint. Moving to our 75th question. A 12-year-old female patient complained of dull chronic headache in the ocular area. The pain was initially intermittent but becomes constant. Sleep often relieves the pain, but it comes back the next morning. Head movements often exhibit the pain. There is a plantar flexion on the right. What is the most accurate diagnosis for her? Option A. Sinus infection. Option B. Supratentorial tumor. Option C. Muscle tension. Option D. Infratentorial tumor. And the answer is... Option B. Supratentorial tumor. 
explanation to this question is supratentorial tumor occurs in the region of the brain located above the tentorium cerebelli symptoms include morning headache or headache that goes away after vomiting weakness or change in sensation on one side of the body unusual sleepiness or lethargy and seizures so that's all for today if you need further clarification check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box if you like this mcq session do subscribe to this channel for more videos thank you